This is going to be topic 44, chest trauma. And key concepts. Upon completion of this chapter, you will understand the different mechanism of blunt and penetrating injuries, the pathophysiology associated with thoracic trauma injuries, using mechanisms and patient presentation to identify leading diagnosis in thoracic blunt and penetrating injuries, initiating the proper treatment protocol for each symptom complex, transferring patient care to the appropriate facility or transport unit. Overview. Traumatic injuries. Approximately 100,000 Americans die yearly. Thoracic injuries are, thoracic injuries are nearly 25% of those deaths. They give us lengthy hospital stays and long-term disabilities. More men and women ages 1 to 44 will die from traumatic injuries than any other cause. And in, in general, our goal should be improving morbidity and survival, early recognition, appropriate treatment, and the transport to the uh, proper facility. Chief concerns. Assessing the presence for a chest injury starts with the mechanism of injury. So take a look, overall view of the scene, and try to figure out what actually occurred. This guides a paramedic in making potential diagnoses and developing treatment plans. Uh, provides information about the pattern force leading to the patient's injury. Uh, mechanism of injury categories, there's two of them. One of them being blunt trauma and the other one being penetrating injuries. Mechanism of injury blunt trauma due to the transmission of energy rather than uh, transmission, for, a transmission from an object. Uh, usually the result of a motor vehicle accident, a fall, or an assault. So whenever we talk about blunt trauma, the energy off of the speed that they're going, kinetic energy equals mass times velocity squared, is delivered into the patient. Uh, specific traumatic thoracic injuries are things like rib fractures. Ribs 4 through 9 are the most commonly fractured from blunt force because of their exposed location. Um, multiple rib fractures leading to separation of one segment of the chest is known as a flail chest segment. Pulmonary injuries, they occur both after blunt and penetrating injuries. Um, examples of these are going to be uh, open pneumothorax, which would be an open hole to the thoracic cage, which will collapse a lung. Uh, simple pneumothorax, collection of air between the lung and the chest wall and then a tension pneumothorax. Uh, whenever we talk about tension pneumothoraxes, air enters the lung, escapes into the pleural space through the damaged section and compresses the heart, lungs, and gray vessels, which will rob from your cardiac output. A pulmonary contusion, uh, injury of the lung itself, most common injury seen in blunt thoracic trauma. And then we can also have things like vascular injuries, damage to the heart and great vessels in the thorax, Traumatic aortic disruptions. Now, we have a leftover ligament or a leftover piece of tissue, and it turns into a ligament that are remnants of the fetal circulation, and this is called the ligamentum arteriosum. Now, what this essentially does here, say you have the heart, and this is the aorta. A little smaller than I was wanting. And this ligament attaches like so. Now, great force travel, shear force to where we're moving forward and then back, we can pluck a hole in this, which generally causes the patient to bleed out. Cardiac injuries, uh, damage to the heart, myocardial contusions, which are bruising of the heart muscle, can lead to a period of abnormal heart contractions, PVCs, VTAC, VFib. Um, myocardial rupture, heart ruptures after rapid deceleration, and it may be displaced um, rapidly into the sternum and the spine. So essentially by compression or by movement forward in a sudden stop, the heart gets compressed between there and the ventricles can actually rupture. Uh, a special case also of commodio cordis. Um, what this does is it hits the heart, injures it, um, applies probably some bruising to the heart tissue itself. And what it gives us is a conduction system abnormality. And this conduction system abnormality essentially causes V-fib or V-tac. Most of the time we find these individuals in cardiac arrest. 
uh, blunt trauma continued. And it's difficult to diagnose sometimes in the field, and this would be things like diaphragmatic ruptures, uh, result from abnormal abdominal contents being forced upward in the thoracic cavity. So this right here, this is intestine that has come from the lower abdominal cavity, and there's a torn section of diaphragm that allowed it up there. So an example of this, if you're listening to lung sounds and you hear bowel sounds where lung tissue should be, this would be a clinical indication that you might have a diaphragmatic rupture. Uh, mechanism of injury penetrating trauma, typically created by a uh, projectile from a firearm, shrapnel from a bomb, or a stabbing injury. These include several things, uh, penetrating injuries of the pulmonary and cardiovascular. Uh, the pulmonary system, if it is penetrated, uh, may damage the trachea, bronchi, or tracheal bronchi disruption, which then no air gets to the alveolar sac. On the cardiovascular side, normal emptying space between the epicardium and pericardium may become filled with blood or fluid after an injury like this occurs or penetrating injury, and this could lead to a cardiac tamponade. Uh, bleeding around the sac. It's a very fibrous sac. Uh, essentially squeezes all four chambers until no more cardiac output occurs. Esophageal injuries. <clears throat> Most are due to penetrating injury. Damage to the esophagus will not cause immediate life-threatening injury. Uh, consider management of the injuries to the trachea, heart, and vessels before addressing any kind of potential esophageal injury. History. Attempt to obtain a complete history like their allergies or past medical history. If they have any kind of cardiac history, like a pacemaker or uh, an, an internal uh, defibrillator, uh, any previous surgeries that the patient may have, their medications um, is also important to obtain, especially in elderly patients because they're on multiple medications generally. Uh, unconscious patient history, if there's family and friends nearby or medical alert bracelets. On examination, consider uh, this format, assess their level of consciousness, evaluate their airway, their breathing, identify and address any type of gross bleeding and circulation, and assess their neurological status. Can they feel things in their extremities? Uh, and then proceed to the secondary assessment. Sometimes you would find things in the secondary assessment that would support what you found in your primary. Thoracic cage trauma, rib fracture symptoms are pain, bruising, and deformity. Uh, first or second rib fracture, if they have one of those, indicates an injury with significant force. This is also protected a little bit by the clavicle, uh, and it also may indicate an injury to the aorta or trachea. Lower left rib fractures may cause an underlying splenic injury because lower right upper quadrant, or I'm sorry, left upper quadrant of the abdomen houses the spleen. So any kind of uh, shock or trauma to the lower left rib cage could uh, insert itself into there and lacerate the spleen. It's highly vascular. Rib fractures on the right uh, may indicate a liver laceration. Sternal fractures are rare, but they do occur in accidents involving a high amount of force. Uh, clavicular fractures occur in the middle and the distal third of the clavicle. Uh, deformity may be visual, often described as a handlebar fracture due to its shape. Scapular fractures, uh, they require a very significant amount of force. Uh, scapula is a plate, mostly in the back. Um, any type of pain, moving their arms on the affected side would cause pain to the scapular fracture. So be aware of that as well. Uh, cardiopulmonary trauma continued. Tension pneumothorax, a variety of signs and symptoms, difficulty breathing, diminished or absent breath sounds of the affected side. Uh, pulmonary contusion, uh, lead to impaired oxygen gas exchange because the tissue is bruised, the alveolar sac can't transfer gases appropriately. Commodial cortis, diagnosed generally through mechanism of injury, uh, usually a blunt blow to the chest, and observed ventricular fibrillation on the cardiac monitor. So generally, the uh, commodio cortis puts us into full arrest from the conduction disturbance. Contusion or cardiac rupture. Myocardial contusion presents with pain and bruising over the sternum. They may also have a dysrhythmia. Uh, 
myocardial rupture presents with bruising, chest pain, dysrhythmias, hypotension, and shock because they're leaking um, cardiac output. A high mortality rate may be found uh, and the patient may be in cardiac arrest on scene. Aortic disruptions, often fatal, most patients uh, bleed out at the scene. Hypertension occurs as the body's attempt to compensate for the decreased blood flow to the major, majority of the body. Um, superior vena cava injuries are often fatal as well. Even though they're under low pressure, they're a large amount of blood volume. It's hard to get ahead of that. Uh, cardiopulmonary trauma continued, diaphragmatic ruptures, may be symptomatic or have occult injuries, uh, symptoms like shortness of breath, tracheal deviation, absence of breath sounds, uh, suspect with thoracic or abdominal injury or thoracic abdominal injuries are very close, so those lower rib cages on both sides could lacerate uh, the diaphragm very easily. Traumatic asphyxia, uh, sudden compression force of the chest between two surfaces. Uh, forces blood rapidly into the upper thorax area and face and increases capillary pressures resulting in capillary rupture um, associated with loss of hearing and vision. Associated injuries are often lethal. Uh, should be suspected um, and in other words on this uh, a lot of force just got administered to the chest cavity. So uh, an example of this let's say that the patient with all of their great vessels in their heart got squeezed from both directions from moving this direction and say hitting the steering wheel and the chair broke and all of a sudden they got squished so all of the blood that was in this chest cavity immediately tries to go backwards through the heart no cardiac output occurs during this crushing episode um, most of the time, the capillaries that are in those areas have too much pressure in them and they'll rupture. So you'll have little hemorrhages all over. Their eyes are probably bulging. They may have JVD and very young, not having any type of cardiac history. So very simply, consider that they might have traumatic asphyxia. Try to correct this by removing pressure and see if there's anything that you can get ahead of as far as physiology-wise in the chest cavity. Assessment. Considerations. Identify the mechanism of injury, form a list of filled diagnoses, and then compare the diagnoses to your exam findings. We are either going to eliminate or suspect something off of evidence that the patient is giving us. Shock assessment. Most common cause is blood loss secondary to hemorrhage. Exclude all hemorrhagic causes. Consider cardiogenic cause because the heart is unable to pump either uh, blood from or from the injury that had just occurred or a car possible cardiac tamponade. Uh, PEA is what it generally will give us at the point that we go into traumatic chest or thoracic cage injury with closing pulse pressures would be a sign and symptom of the um, cardiac tamponade, tracheal deviation, which is a later sign for attention in thorax. However, both of these are will cause PEA to where it looks great on the monitor, but it doesn't really have a cardiac output. As far as treatment considerations, check the level of consciousness, ensure a patent airway, consider intubation. Uh, patient that is protecting their own airway, administer them oxygen. The patient that is not protecting their airway, provide basic life support. On flow chest segments, a flow chest segment can markedly impact uh, breathing mechanics. Small flow segments, patient may not be able to breathe deeply due to pain, consider analgesia. A large flow segment um, will impact breathing, consider possible positive pressure ventilation to assist the patient. On evaluation, repeat the assessment, the initial and the secondary assessment, and reevaluate the stability after your interventions. See if it's trending towards the good or bad. Cover open uh, pneumothoraxes with a dressing, and this would be on three sides. Uh, may lead to a tension pneumothorax. Uh, check lung signs, vital signs, and tracheal deviation frequently if we've closed up an open pneumothorax. On the tension pneumothorax, apply an occlusive dressing, secure on three sides. The four sides allows for the air to escape 
<clears throat> unresolved or closed pneumothoraxes perform a needle decompression. Insert the needle into the pleural space, uh, relieves built up pressure that's in there. You may have to do this more than once. It is done at the second or third intercostal space, midclavicular line. You may also use the min auxiliary line. However, you have to be sure that your site is correct. If you get it a little lower on exhalation, the liver may come up and you actually hit the liver. So be aware of that from the mid axillary line, which is the fourth or fifth intercostal space, mid axillary line. Be sure that your um, anatomical locations are correct. Disposition, patient transport, depends on uh, incident and facility location. Patients with conditions described should go to a trauma center. Uh, patients in cardiac arrest should probably go to the nearest facility for stabilization. Transport as quickly as possible and follow local protocol. In conclusion, patients with thoracic trauma present with complex injuries uh, will be encountered by every paramedic. Paramedics must understand the mechanism of injury, kinetomatics, and the pathophysiology that they're seeing. If you have any questions concerning this topic, feel free to contact me. My name is Roy Smith, Smith Art Samaritan EMSOK.com or 405-492-8243. Thank you.